Thank you all for having me. It, it really is an honor. And I've been a part of this organization um, for several years now. And the work that you do is absolutely incredible. And so you all know um, that Gabriella's leg legislation came around because she called out our elected officials. Um, and you could see here on the top of the slide that it says, Gabriella said, stop talking and start doing. Um, and we're all doing that. We are not talking and um, we are the ones that are doing. Uh, I'm really proud to be a part of um, this group and all of these people that are part of this. Um, so a brief history on the original piece of legislation. Um, Gabriella, two weeks before she died, was interviewed for a childhood cancer awareness organization. It was at the time of sequestration and the government was shut down. Gabriella was on a chemotherapy that needed the FDA to take a look at and they were shut down and we were scrambling to find a new chemo for her. We live in the DC metropolitan area. So we know children that go to NIH for their treatments and they were being turned away. So the interviewer asked Gabriella, if you could say anything to our elected officials, what would you say? And she infamously said, stop talking, start doing. And then she said, talk is bullshit, we need actions. And that caught the attention of former House Majority Leader Eric Cantor. And I'll tell you that this was never my path, but I can't imagine um, not doing this um, and, and helping. So the original piece of legislation uh, was signed into law in 2014. We've gotten seven consecutive years funded, almost $90 million to date, but it sunsets. So we um, have our 2.0 that's coming on here. Um, next slide, please. So one of the things that we are most proud of, um, and we can all ha have this as a feather in our cap, is the Data Resource Center. Um, the, the Data Resource Center ha has been made available to the public. So anybody has access to this data, researchers and physicians, to date, there have been over 2,200 users from almost all 50 states and over 50 countries. Uh, that's amazing. As we've talked about earlier, and as we will talk about again, the ability to have access to data is just instrumental for our community to move forward to get from diagnosis to cures. Next slide, please. Um, another thing that I really like to, to point out is that since this bill was signed into law, the original piece of legislation, there have been 54 grants that have been made from uh, institutions uh, and uh, across the country. And obviously CHOP is one of them. And that is really an amazing piece of legislation um, that uh, has enabled research, not just for childhood brain cancer and cancer, but childhood disease as well. Next slide, please. So this 2.0 legislation is very different from the original piece of legislation. The original piece of legislation, once it's fully funded, um, will mean $126 million. Um, those monies go through NIH um, and there are grants that are given out. Uh, but like I said, we are sunsetting on that. Uh, what we also knew with the original piece of legislation is that every year that it was appropriated, NIH would have $12.6 million that they could give out in grants. With this new um, bill, the monies on this are just infinite. And it's just so very exciting for many, many reasons. One is this bill does not require our elected officials to appropriate the funds. They don't need to find the money someplace. They don't have to take it from someplace else in order to give it to us, to our kids. Um, it doesn't cost us taxpayers a penny. It actually comes from existing penalties against four different entities, the pharmaceuticals, medical device manufacturers, um, natural supplements, and the cosmetic industry. So all of these are under the umbrella of the Foreign Corrupt Policy Act. Those four companies would be breaking the Foreign Corrupt Policy Act and they're penalized for that. And the fines are significant for that. The challenge that comes into play is that it's not 
um, every year. We don't know, as we do with the first piece of legislation, that we'll be getting uh, $12.6 million a year. So for example, last year, um, Herbalife was fined 130 some odd million dollars for breaking the Foreign Crop Policy Act. So we could get a fine for 130 some odd million dollars. And then the next year, maybe not anything. Uh, but what we do, how we change the legislation a bit is we turned it into a no year money, which means that um, it is allowing NIH to ensure that they make a good investment into research. So if they've got research and they only use $100 million in that given year, then the remaining monies can roll over to future years. Uh, so very, very exciting about this. So next slide, please. So very, very simple and easy ways that everybody can help with, um, with getting this legislation to be passed. Um, one of the first things that I would like to say, you could see here a couple of things, sign on and sign up. One of the first things that I would like to say is if you all that are on this, this call now, do not get an email from Jerry. Um, you need to sign up for her email. Jerry and I talk on a monthly basis. I give her updates about what is going on and she will include links to different things that you can do, knowing what you can sign on with, but it's really important that you sign up for that. So please be certain that you sign up. Not only is it with my legislation, but it's about all things that have to do with obviously CBTN. Another very easy sign on that everybody should absolutely do is if you have not done so already, go to the NIH website, nih.gov, in the search bar, either type in Kids First or Gabriella Miller, and it will take you to their page, which is very robust. Uh, but from that page, um, sign up for their newsletter for many different reasons. One is it lets you know what they're doing, what grants have gone out and so forth. But I think the one that is the most important is it will give you the heads up as to when they have an open granting session. And uh, our community as researchers, we, we need to know that. So that could be delivered to your email box. Um, you know when something's available and you've got that ability to just send, um, send in your grant application right then and there. <clears throat> so that's just for the benefit um, of obviously you and uh, of the research and knowing what's going on, but some things that you could do to help with the Kids First 2.0. Um, very easy. We have a letter of support. Um, this letter is truly, truly important. Um, this is a letter that we have in our one pager that we send out to all of the elected officials as we go and we talk with them. Um, they invariably ask us two questions. What organizations support this legislation and how many advocates do you have? So the very bottom of, the, of our um, one pager, we've got links that take them. And so right now we've got over 250 organizations, foundations, research facilities, so forth. Um, and we've got over 1400 advocates. All of these are folks from across the country, but our goal is to double those numbers. So our next goal is to get 500 different organizations and we'd like to get uh, 2,500 um, advocates to sign on. So I will ask, please, you could see, the, um, that sign on right there. Um, take a quick second, please. It will take you about 30 seconds once you get in there to sign on to that letter of support. Um, once you do that, I'll also ask share with your colleagues, with your spouses, whomever, because the more that we have that sign on, the better it is. Um, because it's letting our elected officials know that something so simple that takes really just a couple of seconds will, um, will make a huge difference in their determination to sign on to sponsor our bill. Um, another thing that we have is we have a social media working group um, and a very aptly named Stop Talking and Start Doing very, very simple. It's a grassroots effort that we have. Um, we have a really great gentleman who heads all of that up, Joe Baber. Um, he makes it so easy for us. It is literally copy and paste, and then you can tweet. 
if you have 10 minutes a week and you'd be willing to go ahead and do that, or if you know somebody that does, um, you see my email address at the bottom of this um, screen here, email me and let me know. We'd be happy to have you sign on with that. And um, then finally, not happening yet. We're actually in the process of working on this, but something, again, all of these things that we have are very easy steps that do not take a lot of your time. Um, we are getting together voters voice and what that is very simple. We now have our bill introduced in both the House and the Senate. So we're going to start with the voters voice and it is you click on a link, you put in your zip code, it will populate with who your congressmen and your senators are. We will have a letter in there with the ask telling them about the legislation. And if you'd like, you could just simply set, send. So click on a link, zip code, send, or preferably with all of the folks that are actually on this call, there's an area in there where you can actually write your personal notes, whether it's your story about uh, being a doctor, being a researcher, being a parent advocate. Um, and you could put that in there and then press send. And those are so important. We have gotten countless, um, sign-ons for other pieces of legislation for folks that, that participate in that. And that's something as you sign up for Jerry's email, she'll be sharing that in the future. So a uh, very, very easy ways that are extraordinarily effective that can help um, make a difference with getting pieces of legislation like this signed. So if anybody has questions, please let me know. Thank you so much, Ellen. Um, if you check the chat, you can see links to the list serve as well as the letter of support. Um, and I really appreciate all of your efforts on our behalf, Ellen. It's, it's really made such a huge impact, not only to CBTN, but, but really to the research community at large and, and the progress that's been uh, possible, made possible. Yeah, let me just add a comment because, uh, you know, I think, um, Ellen, one of the things that Kids First did that I think was really foundational is it recognized the opportunity um, to really expand the impact for any one disease through connectivity and integration across resources and across communities. Um, and so CBTN was able to um, bring in all of its current data into Kids First um, as a foundational data set um, because of all the support and funding that foundation had provided in generating some of those data sets, but then that provided links and connectivity to other pediatric cancers and other rare diseases in ways that enhanced our capacity to drive new discovery. And I think that's really a phenomenal framing for how communities can come together uh, through new technologies like the Kids First Data Resource to advance discovery. Um, we need coordination and focus within our domain, but at the same time, reach out across those silos of diseases and um, find those opportunities because we're all facing some similar challenges uh, as it relates to infrastructure and implementation. So I just wanted to give credit to really what I thought was a transformational model uh, of research that hadn't occurred pre uh, Kids First. Thank you for sharing. Thank Great point, Adam. We're running a little bit behind. There's one quick question uh, from Asher Marks. Ellen, wonderful to see you. Are there any days planned for parent and physicians to meet with staffers in person to tell our stories? Oh, uh, hi, Asher. Um, how are you? Um, so yes, as a matter of fact, um, send, please send me an email. We, uh, last year, um, the 2.0 was introduced in April, um, of last Congress. And we had about 70 different meetings with members um, in the house from across the country. And from those meetings, we had 46 co-sponsors. And we truly do need um, people that would like to join uh, in those Zoom meetings. And so there are members uh, of this call that have joined meetings in the past and we absolutely welcome that. So absolutely, yes. Great, it's a great opportunity for all of us to get involved. 